So I'm just picking the last of my really early cauliflowers and they're giants and pretty hard to get to. But that is a lovely cauliflower and I've got bigger ones to pick. <laughs> I'm keen to get this bed emptied because this is where peppers are going later on this weekend. Yeah, and that is a mighty cauliflower. So very pleased with those. I've got to take this one out as well, unfortunately. This one has not thrived. Because not everything succeeds in gardening. And you have to take the successes and the failures. Small but perfectly formed. I've also got quite a nice crop of peas. Half of these are mange too and the other half are sugar snaps. I always rave, rave about the Monge 2 Oregon sugar pod, um, but actually I've really been enjoying the sugar snaps this year and I'm not going to pick all of them by any means because these are one of my favourite snack foods for when I'm working on the allotment. So I need to leave enough for myself, but I've also got a lot at home uh, a little bit further on than these. But these were grown underneath one of my low tunnels from a January sowing. Uh, planted them out beginning of February probably. Yeah, I think that'll do. So I know it looks like an onion bed. And it is an onion bed, but actually primarily this is my asparagus bed and I've just found over the years that it works really well to plant onions and asparagus together. These are overwintering onions because they both finish at the same time and the asparagus doesn't care about the onions and the onions doesn't care, don't care about the asparagus and we've been picking asparagus every day literally every day <laughs> for quite a while now. So I just leave those onions to grow on. But that is quite a nice bunch of asparagus there. I already picked a load of calabrese uh, early on in the week when I cleared it from the polytunnel beds. Still got quite a bit in these beds, so I'm gonna have to clear these pretty soon. And now I've got my next batch of cauliflowers coming on nicely down there. Next batch of calabrese coming on here. And then my next batch of cauliflowers. And I've got some beautiful spring cabbages. I think I'll take this one. best spring cabbage I've ever grown actually. That's a lovely specimen. This is the last look at my kale bed. And there's actually still some you know really quite nice kale on here but uh, primarily at the moment we're eating uh, flowering brassicas and cabbages and I've got some lovely red cabbages just starting to heart up now and uh, so I'm really pleased with those. I should be harvesting those towards the end of June, I should think, which is pretty early for red cabbages, but I really like to do things slightly earlier than most people. And 
got some really nice savoys as well, which are just tarting up as well. And I've got some loose leaf savoy as well. So um, yeah, we're not short of uh, brassicas at the moment. Just sort of transitioning from last year's kale to this year's kale. It'll take us a couple of weeks. Second early strawberries coming on really nicely. But I've got quite the abundance of strawberries in the polytunnel and the greenhouse. I've been picking about that many every single day. I've also got quite a lot of beetroot. And uh, so I'm just taking, thin, thinning them out basically. And picking a mix of colours. We've still got some beetroot in store, so I'm trying not to take too much out of this bed. But they're pretty good beetroot for this time of year. I'm pretty pleased with these. We don't have any chard at the moment, but uh, beetroot leaves a great substitute and uh, we had a great roast meal yesterday so I um, picked loads of carrots for that but uh, I'm still gonna pick a few more not quite a few to get through these are the overwintered carrots so I've started these back in October and uh, it's a nice timing you know because you do get you know carrots really top quality carrots um you know really nice and early and uh, so much better than trying to keep your sort of summer sown carrots going that long so like most people probably don't have any leeks left so i'm using elephant garlic as a substitute and just taking thinnings out of the elephant garlic bed so i always leave a lot of my elephant garlic to to grow on and as a result i get you know it's really a nice leek harvest elephant garlic being in the leek family it's a really great substitute and just a handful of board beans to go with these field bean tips and board bean tips and these make a, a really nice um, addition to anything basically where you use spinach and it all goes to help me get to my 30 different types of fruit and veg a week that's my target every week of the year I don't always make it every week through winter Sometimes down to 20 or something like that, but still do pretty well. Those are looking really nice. And it does help. It's one of the few bits of gardening law that I subscribe to. It's a good idea to remove your field bean and broad bean tips before the black fly arrive. You get less problems with black fly when you do that. The other thing is really now's the time to be taking these out when they start to flower if you want maximum nitrogen sequestration kind of thing into the ground um, i'm just leaving them in a bit just because i'm harvesting these tips but uh, i'll be taking them out in a few weeks here's the next bed of spinach it's kind of ready to harvest now and uh, it's interplanted around the yakon but I've got loads of other spinach I've got to pick instead. And since I'm clearing the whole bed, the easiest way to do that is the scissors. These uh, allotment lettuces are coming on quite nicely actually. 
but uh, I've got lots of lettuce back at home, which is um, which is ready, more than ready to be honest. So uh, hopefully this will be ready in two or three weeks' time. Mm. It tastes good already, though. Looks like it'll be white cauliflowers next week. Right, and this is where we end up. So, pretty good table. I'm not going to run through everything here. I'm uh, just going to say lots of salads. Absolutely gorgeous this time of year. Loads and loads of spinach. Really pleased. Have cucumbers again in abundance and courgettes in abundance and loads and loads of strawberries. That, as I say, that's not even the day's harvest there. Um, masses and masses of spinach. Although I won't have as much spinach going forward because I've just cleared a bed. Um, look at all that. Loads and loads of asparagus and beet leaves and salad onions. And of course those beautiful cauliflowers, all this lovely calabrese, the um, elephant garlic leeks, uh, that spring cabbage, carrots, Field bean tops, potatoes, broad beans and peas, uh, new season beetroot, little baby beets when I was clearing a bit of space, and something hiding over there, underneath there. Oh yeah, radish. So, that is a lovely harvest for this time of year, because we're, again, right in the middle of Hungry Gap. <laughs> My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.